Welcome to the Spoilers of the Damned podcast. Welcome to the uh, Spoilers of the Damned Twin Peaks podcast, episode two, covering episodes three and four of Twin Peaks season three. And can I start by saying a great big hello to uh, <laughs> all of our fans who are definitely listening. <laughs> uh, I hope you uh, include some uh, some sounds of coins crashing against metal. Yeah, need to have, yeah. And then a <laughs> lovely little lady saying, which one, Mr. Jackpot? <laughs> Um, I think Dougie Jones. We, could definitely, <laughs> we could definitely say with this episode, well, we probably haven't reached peak, uh, and that's a pun in itself, peak hey. meme meme point, but we're about to reach the event horizon of Twin Peaks mm. memes. This week has been, uh, my entire life has been reading through the subreddit and seeing the wonderful memes that we now have <laughs> <laughs> provided to us by the glorious uh, Mr. David Lynch. That's brilliant. Love it. I absolutely love it. And obviously now there's even more because of uh, Donald Trump's bizarre Twitter post. Yes. The coffee. I had, f- I had no idea what this was about. I just, I, I started to see memes. It was Twin Peaks. I first saw the memes, but then obviously it spread out to pretty much everyone on Facebook. <laughs> so I thought, oh, this is a thing. I better Google it and find out what's going on. <laughs> it's pretty fair. Coffee. Coffee. And I mean, it, yeah, I mean, the first time I saw it was the picture of, uh, of, well, let's just say, uh, what's the best way to put it? Um, uh, brain damaged Coop. Because um, <laughs> that's kind of what he is <laughs> right now. Um, and it was the shot of him dressed as uh, as Dougie Jones with the with the tie on top of his head. As oh, he spits out the coffee because it's too hot. And then just, um, that's what's always just coffee. F- <laughs> coffee fever, <laughs> whatever you want to, how you want to pronounce it. And I thought, oh, that's, that's, that's funny. And then I realized it was because Trump in his stupidity somehow... Uh, I don't know what the fuck he was trying to say. Uh, yeah, I guess it. I'm. I think it must have happened overnight for us in the UK. So we yeah. we kind of like woke up to the the, the meme tides of uh, <laughs> of Coffee and had to kind of reverse engineer and find out what the hell happened. I hope one day, like you know, before he dies, you know, uh, he he reveals what it was. You know, maybe it's some kind of like trigger word. To, <laughs> it, you know, some kind of like agent, like sometimes to do with the Russians. I don't fucking know. Yeah, some some <laughs> somewhere right now, just hundreds of sleeper cells are waking up. <laughs> <laughs> Order sixty six. Yeah, that kind of thing. Yeah, Palpatine levels of uh, insanity. But yeah, anyway, uh, yeah. But um, well, yeah, you're right. I'm, the the memes are flooding in for the these last two episodes. Uh, in even particular, before, I think. Yeah, yeah. Even before um, Trump's Twitter gaff, there was there's been plenty of funny stuff. Yeah. And I think I think it's definitely we'll, we'll we'll cover the sort of the breakdown of the plot in the minute. But I think overall, I definitely feel these two episodes uh, kind of uh, gave a well well a, a welcomed kick of humour, mm. uh, more so than one and two. One and two did have these little kind of like nods that were kind of quirky, but uh, three and four really kind of like bring on the humour. <laughs> oh, I was constantly laughing at at um I, I've watched. Uh, these two episodes, uh, I think maybe three times now. Oh, really? Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> because they're so great. And I mean, we'll we'll get into it. But things like um, Michael Sarah's um speech, you know, his little kind of like my shadows always in front of me, except when it's dark or whatever. Yeah. Um, the first time, I was kind of like pissing myself laughing, and my wife was just sitting there going, "What? What? <laughs> what is this? What?" <laughs> While I'm just, I so I missed half of what he was saying. <laughs> <laughs> so it, that that scene definitely kind of uh, bears repeating. It's a little strange. Um, I mean, I because I, I think yeah, he's. I'm pretty sure he's quoting stuff from uh, Marlon, Bra- like a, a film with Marlon Brando, obviously because he calls himself Wally Brando, even though it's Brennan. Yeah, no. Um, but presumably, he. Um, I think he's doing a complete 
like Marlon Brando impress uh, impersonation of of in a certain movie I read. I mean, oh, even down to yes. the leather jacket and the cap and everything. That would make sense, actually. I mean, that was a uh, um, interesting <laughs> <laughs> performance. I will <laughs> say kudos. I mean. You know, uh, some people might have thought it was blindingly obvious, but I will say kudos to the people on the subreddit who kind of called that he would be their son. I thought he might be as well, just because you know the it's the, it fits his roles, yeah. yeah, his kind of typecast. Yeah, he ex- exactly. Um, Which means but, you, you um, might well be right about that other guy, sort of oh, basing it purely on terms of what they kind of are known for. Oh, you mean uh, Robert Nepper? Yeah, I think so. You were saying in the first episode. Yeah, I, I, I mean. I could be absolutely wrong, but I've just I've just got a feeling because just because of the way they um they showed the evolution of of the um the arm from mm. being a, a you know the man from another place to the tree from another place <laughs> the flesh tree um and I was just thinking um there's just perhaps they were uh, foreshadowing the fact that Bob will eventually come back but he's going to be played by someone else yeah just it's their way of of getting around it I could be absolutely completely wrong. But that's no, no, I'm still you, sure that's what's going to happen. <laughs> if you've got a hunch, I mean, I think you're probably onto something. The mm-hmm. clues are definitely there, although we also got a lot more mystery kind of lumped on us this week as well. Yes, um, mainly with uh, Dougie Jones. Poor old Dougie Jones. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Who made Dougie Jones? Was he? Did he come out with with Evil Coop? You know, um, yes. How 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 and why and who manufactured him? Mm. Uh, and there are there are a couple of. Uh, I won't say obvious answers, but a couple of kind of uh, clear ideas as to what what that might possibly have been. Mm. Um, but we'll get into that. We'll we'll start sort of uh, as always, sort of plagiarizing the Wikipedia summary of the episode and using that as a kind of a launch off point. What are you talking about? I don't mean this. Is, I've got this written down. I have um have actually um because I have watched the episode so many times this week already. Um, I didn't need to return to the summary as much as uh, with one and two, uh, and many because we were dealing mostly with um, sort of uh, there was scenes on their own here and there, but we were kind of dealing with Coop for a lot of it. So um, yeah, we we kind of uh, we know Coop, or at least you know we know who Coop used to be and who he might become again. Hopefully. We can only hope because yeah. he's uh, he's a little lost at the moment. <laughs> well, yeah, and let's start there because I mean, um, episode three opens with uh, Cooper's magical journey continued on <laughs> from the end of episode two. It's it, it's, uh, it, it's some of the the strange. I think it is the strangest thing I've ever seen on a um, in a television show. And I I did start watching Legion recently. I haven't finished Legion yet, but that's got a lot of. Uh, strange dreamlike imagery as well just because of the, okay because the character um but the whole opening i think it was 20 minutes just it, yeah it was weird i was talking to my aunt about it at work and i just we were saying that it it felt the whole section felt longer than it was but not in a bad way yes i agree with you completely actually because the first time i saw it i thought god this is long but yeah. on rewatching, um actually those scenes are not as long as I thought they were, um, yeah. it's it's more a kind of yeah, you, you, it's a kind of a trick of the mind thing, isn't it? Yeah, it's, it's I think it's just because of th- there's so much strange stuff happening, but it, at the same time it's not rushing through it. So I think it because it allows your your uh, your brain to actually sort of process what's going yeah. on. Yeah, <laughs> it feels like yeah. more has happened than it really has because it, it's just I mean everyone um, apparently you know. I've been told anyways, a lot of people have been saying just how, what I thought that at the very beginning, I thought something wrong was, uh, something was wrong, sorry, with, um, my stream because of the, uh, the, the style that Lynch was going for very early on, oh, which yeah, with the kind so of the, weird. um, backwards and kind of like looping of, of things as well. Yeah. It was yeah. really strange. It was like strange, like clicking noise as well. So is someone on my stream? Shit. <laughs> and yeah, it is. It's thought. very disorientating. Yeah, and I just thought oh, this is Lynch. So it's it's there's a high chance this is <laughs> this is intentional, yeah. and it was. <laughs> so, well, um, okay. So, um, meanwhile, uh, the evil doppelganger. I, I 
I'm calling him Mr. C now because most people online seem to be calling him Mr. C. Yes, and it's easier than Devil Coop or Evil Coop. So Mr. Yeah. C just sounds better as well. Sounds very uh, Alan Wake, actually, Mr. Scratch. But, it so. does, doesn't it? Yeah, which I mean, he's, obviously, a huge reference, uh, influence kind of, on that game. He kind of is playing Mr. Scratch. <laughs> yeah. I kind of like it. <laughs> um, well, you know, he has a very kind of... Uh, not magical, but slightly scary journey where he almost yes. crashes his car and then uh, pukes up. And I wanted to ask you about the puke, actually. Mm-hmm. Because having only just watched Firewalk with me literally two weeks ago now, um, I understand that this stuff is called uh, Garmin Bosia or, yeah. or something like that. That's right, Garmin Bosia. Yeah. yeah. Um, my understanding on a very base level is that that's something to do with kind of like distilled suffering or something like that. Uh, yes, it's... um. It's in in the the world of the Black Lodge um, and the inhabitants. It's what they I think they I'm, I'm sure they they eat it and it's uh, pain and suffering, but it's embodied as creamed corn because David Lynch. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, that's um, so it's obviously I think it's because um, to do with obviously Cooper coming back through and that's why he was vomiting up Garmin Bosia. This obviously there's a reason for that. Um, probably because he was supposed to be the one that was going back. Yeah, but as we as as it as it you know, came about, he didn't go back. So yeah. poor old uh, Mr. Dougie Jones switched places with Coop instead. Yeah, and then uh, turned so into a jawbreaker. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, yeah. Just to to summarise, um, Cooper finds a portal. Um, mm. He's initially swayed away by the uh, the woman with no eyes yes, to uh, not go through number fifteen. Which mm. I think is it's strongly hinted that number fifteen represents the uh, cigarette lighter in Mister C's car. Yes, I was thinking that. Yeah, so um, he's kind of. I was trying to think about whether this uh, woman with no eyes is is being helpful or a hindrance to Coop because I mm. mean, uh, uh, Mike, the uh, the guy with uh, the one arm, he tells um, Dougie he was manufactured for a purpose and that's been fulfilled. Yeah, and then he later tell uh, well we'll get on to when he tells Coop that he was tricked, but um, because Coop was tricked and was tricked out of entering number fifteen, it's well I mean that could be the trick or that could be something that potentially saved his life. We don't know exactly who these people these spirits are and who they're actually helping or not. Yeah, we don't we don't know who's helping who. It's exactly. I mean the only ones that we're kind of sure on is um, Mike. Um, the giants and the man from another place. The, those three are the only ones that have ever really um, always been trying to to help. They're like yeah. the. I mean, they're all you know. They still all consume Garmin Bosia, but um, they they seem to be the there's there's that side, and I've seen there's a side of Bob and the doppelgangers, which um, which are obviously trying to to just kill people and stop Coop in some horrible, terrifying way. Yeah, um, and then obviously we've got the the thing banging on the door which uh, the whole, yeah. that whole sequence was again we said it with the the um the apparition in the glass box um again very very twin peaks uh twin peaks uh, very silent hill sorry <laughs> i'm not with it am i um very silent hill because i was sorry i was about to say because twin peaks inspired silent hill and i got my words crossed um get off the comment section fuck i made a mistake um <laughs> <laughs> um but yeah a very silent hill um like the the woman with the with no eyes the the strange banging on the the door, very very really unsettling and very nightmarish. Um, yeah. And also, you know, so what was it on that was on the opposite side of the door? Was it the creature from the uh, from the glass box? Was it Bob? Was it something else? Was it? It could be the doppelganger of um, the arm because it's that's what initially sent him into the um, the area he found himself in because it made the the floor give way and he fell through nothingness. Yeah. And I mean that that's the thing isn't it because I mean it could be uh, it could be that he was saved from going through maybe the trick that they wanted to play on him was was to get him into bad cooper's or mr c's body um maybe. just in time to get incarcerated and kind of locked up for the rest of his life <laughs> uh, <laughs> but yeah it could go either way and that's what's really interesting about it is um obviously we alongside coop we don't know exactly <laughs> What's going on, or who to trust? <laughs> no, we really don't, and I I kind of like that because it's um because we still got a, a, a few good few episodes left, um so I I like that it's it's four episodes in and it's still continuing to um build a lot of mystery um 
in all the right ways. Uh, I did I did notice as well, like, I th- I thought when I saw it that it was, but when uh, Cooper's in the... There's that great shot when he's on top of the, the square box and he climbs up the ladder. Yes. And there's just nothing. There's just space around him and nothingness. And you saw a face pass underneath that said the yes. words Blue Rose. I, mm-hmm. And I saw that. I thought, that looks a lot like Major Briggs. But I knew that the actor was dead and even dead since 2008, I think. Yeah. So I was like, I'm pretty sure that was Major Briggs. And then, lo and behold, in the credits, it um, it was Major Briggs. It must have just been... Um, I think they Stock redubbed position. him. They they took an old clip and they kind of uh, did a voice underneath it that kind of sort of fit the lips. Yeah. I mean, it, they can get away with a lot because it's, it's supposed to be dreamlike and ethereal. So, you mm, know, exactly. they can play around with it. But mm. yeah, that is, that is Major Briggs. I have seen some people uh, posit that uh, the you know the John Doe from the first episode the headless mm-hmm. um, that because his head is floating that that body might potentially belong to uh, Briggs but I, was I mean it might be yeah it's possible because um, I mean every everything is possible <laughs> yeah. and it would explain because of the um, I think it was episode I mean we're getting ahead of ourselves but in episode four they get the results back on the on the John Doe body and it's um, it's blocked. Yeah, it's Some, by somehow military blocked by restriction, the, uh, isn't it? Yeah, by by the military. So I think that's what sparked the um, the belief that oh, this is using Major Briggs, and it's a strong possibility it is because mm. it's it's probably very very likely that um, Mister C killed him. Yeah, it's. I mean, the fact that the last person that saw him, as we find out from an, a returning character, which completely completely took me back, um, <laughs> which we'll get to in a second. Yeah, because it was great and. Um, it's actually one of the big surprises of the episode. It was something really simple, but um, the fact that he's, you're told that the last person to see Major Briggs alive was Cooper before he left Twin Peaks, which means that that was Mister C. Yeah, exactly. Which and I mean, um, the, the the few things that don't add up are the fact that um, uh, obviously a body would have decayed by 25 years later. However, mm. as we've already ascertained, uh, Twin Peaks can sort of then is now and past this future <laughs> and we can kind of play around with time exactly so. i mean if he if he was taken to the black lodge first before he was killed then obviously because time uh time acts completely differently in there mm. it's not a linear thing inside the black lodge as, you, as we see in um you know in fire walk with me when cooper is seeing what's happening to laura before she dies and he tries to stop her from taking the ring yeah um so the time time isn't really linear so I, d- I don't know but the, yeah it is Twin Peaks so it could be anything <laughs> <laughs> then you go yeah it's him fuck it Bob did shit <laughs> Bob did Bob definitely, things definitely the hints are there that it could be Major Briggs so we, mm. we will see what happens yes um uh so yes I mean obviously poor Dougie he um gets replaced <laughs> by Coop um and then I guess it, he gets deconstructed into a kind of little uh gold ball yeah, that was oh, it's so strange. <laughs> yeah, I mean, <laughs> I saw so someone mention that gold is actually a really good conductor for electricity, and I mean, the whole thing about Twin Peaks is the spirits kind of like use electricity and and yeah, outlets and stuff like that. True. So, um, it would be a good conductor of 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 electricity or energy. Mm. Um, poor Dougie, though. <laughs> <laughs> he takes it very. Well, to be fair, yeah, he does take it very well. He looks down, sees that his left hand is shrinking. And just says, well, that's weird. <laughs> right before he, his head turns into a black smoke and he looks like a, a piece of humanity from Dark Souls. <laughs> so, ah, he does take it very well. Though. That's weird. As my hand shrinks and the ring falls off. So oh, and there's something about the effects. I mean, uh, some of the <laughs> so effects are weird. just janky, but they, I don't know, they have a kind of a weird charm to them. You know how, like, um... In Deadly Premonition, some of the the animations or the cutscenes just are so bizarre um, yes. <laughs> that you kind of you you, uh, you end up loving them because of the fact that they are kind of janky. Um, <laughs> I definitely feel some of the effects yes. in in the new season are like that. Yeah, yeah, they are. Especially again, the <laughs> just some of, really strange. some of the shots look really good. That's the the weird thing. That's why I think you're right when previously when you were saying that it's an intentional thing because yeah. I mean, in, it, oh, sorry, it, you go ahead. Because no, in um, the scene where he climbs up the ladder and he's just surrounded by space, that's, that's a pretty good green screen effect. It looks good. Yeah. It, you know, yeah. It, it, it's a nice, simple shot and the effect's good enough. And then there's other shots like the 
the the hallway of the Black Lodge appearing beh- but, uh, above um, the the cash machine, like the <sighs> oh, oh the like the one armed bandits, the slots. Yeah, slot machines, slot machines. And I'm just looking at thinking that looks like something I would do in about fifty minutes. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> that's weird. <laughs> and it doesn't even like the way it moves is is very not am- not amateurish, but just like it doesn't look like. A big fancy effect that you'd expect from something. Yeah, <laughs> it's, it's there is really something weird. kind of like lo-fi about them, but I think that adds to the charm. Yeah, uh, I will I say it's, it's a testament to the atmosphere as well. That, I mean, I didn't watch Dougie uh, basically sort of coming undone uh, without. I, I wasn't laughing, but um, so the atmosphere kind of held, and I was kind of intrigued and kind of consumed by the mystery and everything else. Mm. So I didn't see this janky effect and go. Oh my god, this is so hilarious! I can't watch this. It's so bad. No, I didn't. Um, it was just it was more of a case it was of, just more of a kind of like a, a you know like a gentle kind of like wry smile inside that it was kind of a bit. <laughs> and again, we do have to. I, I have to mention it's uh, it's Carl McLaughlin in another terrible week. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, <laughs> this one was even worse. <laughs> it, it just looks so. At least the. The wig he wears as as Mr. C looks kind of greasy and a bit matted in places, mm. um, but still kind of slicked, slicked back as well. But um, the 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 wig for Dougie Jones was just like this solid mesh of fake hair. <laughs> it was glorious when he was crawling on the floor, and I kept expecting it just to pop off. It's just not moving. It's like... <laughs> <laughs> Although I think they knew it was it was a bad effect because as the when Coop replaces him, the the prostitute, um, I think her name is Jane, does have the line of, oh, were you wearing a wig? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> yes. Um, almost like they knew it was a terrible, terrible wig. <laughs> it's so bad. Yeah, it's self-aware, which is nice. <laughs> yes. Um, yep. Yeah, uh, well, as you say, uh, Coop is helped by um, Jade. And I wanted to talk to you about this bit, actually, because I've, I've kind of got a kind of a... Uh, JFK conspiracy kind of plot in my head now about how this works so we see them leave and because uh, Coop now doesn't have Dougie's car keys uh, he no. rides with uh, Jade uh, Jade give two rides <laughs> two rides <laughs> <laughs> And um, but those guys take they're, they're about to take a shot if they see him um, that clearly Dougie is in some kind of trouble yes and, which um, um, they, they do the they subtly uh, reference, well, not subtly reference, but they do reference it later on, don't they? When he, when uh, he's taken home after all his winnings at the casino, yeah. And uh, his wife says, "We can pay them off." Yeah, exactly. That's, but what and kind I of trouble help, is it? <laughs> I can't help but feel that that might be an orchestration by Mister C. I, I think, think it is. Yeah, I think it must have been Mister C's plan to get uh, Coop to take Dougie's place instead of his, mm. and then to have Dougie immediately assassinated. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, because then, you know, cause Cooper is later told, um, you know, one of you has to die because yeah. you're not su- both supposed to be here. Yeah. This is wrong. This is going against the rules. And it is completely going against the rules. And that's another reason why people think that um, uh, Coop's brain damaged because <laughs> because there's not supposed to be two of them uh, in our world, as it were, like in our reality yeah. almost, um, at the same time because of that. It's almost like they're... They're split because Mr. C was struggling to um, keep up the charade. Uh, he mm. couldn't keep it up. He couldn't. He was trying to act like Coop, but his voice was just wasn't There's... coming through properly. And all he could kind of do that was Coop was raise his thumb to Gordon mm. Cole. So people yeah, no, there's definitely maybe... a a marked change in uh, Mr. C as well as Coop. Yeah. So I think definitely what's affecting one is probably affecting the other. Oh, yeah, totally. I definitely think that's that's um, that's the case. Well, I mean, you know, it wouldn't surprise me, and it makes sense. So, if they're not, mm. they're both, you know, not supposed to be on the same plane of existence at the same time. Yeah. Poor old Dougie was the. Uh... <laughs> <laughs> oh, poor Dougie. <laughs> yeah, that must suck. <laughs> Um, yeah, but um, meanwhile, at the Twin Peaks Sheriff Department, um, mm. I love this scene. Uh, Hawk, <sighs> Andy, and Lucy are trying to work out what's missing from the uh, case file on Laura Palmer. <laughs> and I love this scene. It's just, it's a pure kind of Twin Peaks zaniness to me. I mean, yeah. I, I, 
I said before about the humor, and I feel they really brought it back with this because mm. Hawk has got the patience of a saint. <laughs> if I'm he really honest. does. It's is it the bunnies? It's yeah, not the bunnies. I love that. It's just really? kind of like, is it the bunny? <laughs> no, can't be. It's not the bunny. <laughs> <laughs> so that's not anything to do with my heritage. What? I do like uh, the fact that Lucy very um, naively like she's she's so sweet, and the way she turns around to Hawk. Because you're you're Native American. It's like yes, no. She calls him an Indian. It's like you're yeah. an Indian. Yes, Lucy. <laughs> I know. <laughs> I gave it away. But he does have the the absolute um, the patience of a saint, like you said. He really, he really does. <laughs> he does. He does. And um, also um, elsewhere, uh, aside from what's happening to Coop, um, we see that um, the uh, cops have got Mister C in custody, and they yes. kind of let. Uh, Gordon Cole and uh, Albert know that uh, Coop has been found. Yes. That's and, later uh, on. Yeah. That's just as they're um, being debriefed about the the, the happening of, of the glass case in New York with where you finally see the um the uh, the after the aftermath yeah. of uh and it's quite violent. It's it's a quite a nasty, gory sight. I loved it. Because <laughs> it completely comes out of nowhere. And I yeah. loved I love Gordon Cole's reaction when they have the one still image of the apparition, and she goes, "What the hell?" <laughs> I just loved it. <laughs> I love how that scene opens because it's just a completely unrelated case with these random assortment <laughs> of of evidence. Yeah, you've got like, like the, an Uzi. <laughs> and yeah, you've got photos. the you've, you've got the, the like the swimsuit model. I think another model, an Uzi, a child. <laughs> like, yeah. like what? And then. And they they show them the, the apparition. I do have to say um, one thing that uh, one negative thing about this series so far is um, Krista Bell's a fucking terrible actress. Is is that she, the new agent? Yeah, she's terrible. <laughs> she's so bad. Is Mara <laughs> Preston is her character name. Yeah, agent Preston. I, I I don't know. I I just I can't. I I mean, because I I saw her and I thought. Is she trying to be over the top? Oh no, she is trying to be sexy, but in a it's not ironically, and she's not supposed to be like oh like taking the piss of it. She's just really fucking bad. Mm. Uh, I I know and I know that you know because there's not you know I love Twin Peaks, but there's always been a couple of stinkers. But like in terms of uh, acting wise, but um she's not enamored me at all recently. It looks like she's literally just there because yeah. sex. Well, she. Didn't really. I mean, I'm struggling. I've seen this episode a couple of times now, and I'm trying. I'm, I'm struggling to remember exactly what about her personality was actually there. It was a bit kind yeah. of like bland. You know, the only personality that um Larry gave her was look at that ass. <laughs> yeah, like that was that really was out of character. That was very creepy. Strange. Yeah. It was. Like, it was Albert out of character for Albert, definitely. Yeah, and especially Gordon, who's kind of this. Like when we see in the original series, he's kind of like a sweet. Um, romantic old bloke, like he's not old in the original series. But he's like a sweet romantic man. There was a sweet romantic old man. And he's like oogling at her her ass. It's just like, yeah. And especially Albert, like Albert's not like that. It's weird. No. Like, he he wouldn't do that like, because he's just, he's a miserable shit. <laughs> I think I think maybe they're trying to wreck on that as well though, because uh, we'll get into episode four. But um, uh, when Cole is talking to uh, David Duchovny's character, is it Denise? Denise, yes. Yeah. He's, uh, well, she is saying, you know, oh, you, I know you with young women and stuff. And I'm thinking, yeah. really? I don't remember that. Yeah, I'm like, um, you mean like when he was really sweet to uh, Shelley Johnson in the uh, double R? <laughs> when he was like, I can hear you without this. <laughs> and and he, was, he never came across as lechy or anything. He was just really no. sweet to her. Like, yeah, it was a bit know. strange. And yeah, just all suddenly like, oh, well, I know what you're like, you filthy old man. Like, Gordon Cole's a filthy old man? Really? <laughs> Yeah, it's a bit it's strange. Bit, it is a bit strange. Um, yeah. Well, I mean, uh, that leads us on nicely into episode four. Yes. So, um, <laughs> episode four begins with uh, Coop, of course, uh, winning several jackpots <laughs> in the casino. <laughs> uh, oh, this is where it. the glorious Mr. Jackpots meme comes from. <laughs> I, I, I have used this several times in my real life already. I've pointed to myself and said, Mr. Jackpots. <laughs> Mr. Jackpots. <laughs> Dougie Jones. <laughs> <laughs> oh, 
Oh, there's a bit. I, I, we're getting ahead of ourselves again, but there's a bit where he's talking to his um uh, to Naomi Watts's character. Is it Janie? I think. It's Janie. Uh, ja- yes, Janie. And, Janie um, E. Janie E. Yeah, I saw Janie that. E. Jones. That like... But um, uh, he's she's talking to him and she says this, this is the best and worst day of my life, and he goes of my life. Like, <laughs> of my life. <laughs> it's perfect. Mr. Jackpots. <laughs> I love the way he's playing it. It's kind of it's like a real uh, sweet. Um, uh, there's, there's, it's very child like. There's just something very likable about him. <laughs> yeah, it is. And it's, it's Almost driving, adorable. It's driving my wife mental. But um, <laughs> for but, me, I just every scene is a delight when he's when he's like this. Because he's it's it's he's. He's not quite coop yet, but he's there's there's almost like the only thing left is that really innocent side of him, that really nice yeah. innocent side of coop. Yeah, and I think um, the way he communicates with um, Sonny Jim, which is yeah. br- brilliantly named character, <laughs> Sonny Jim Jones and Jenny Jones. Yeah, Jesus Christ, um, those names. But there's but, yeah, there's something endearing, very endearing about him. Exactly, um, and they kind of communicate on a level he hasn't really communicated with anyone since coming out of the, uh, <laughs> the socket in the wall. I love it. Yeah. <laughs> it's just so weird. I'm Mr. Jackpots. Yeah, Mr. Jackpots is going to live forever now. As a, oh, as it, a re- it it really is, and obviously the um the hello. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I've oh. I sort of um I was sort of googling around uh earlier on today, and I found that there's already one of those uh you know on YouTube people make like ten hours of something. <laughs> and there's ten hours of him going hello. <laughs> okay, yeah, I need to, uh, I need to look, I need to look something now. <laughs> it, it is literally it's that. For ten I mean, minutes. I, I am telling you ten. exactly what it is. Oh, is it ten minutes or ten hours? But it's definitely a long time. <laughs> I didn't stay for the whole video, funnily enough. Because <laughs> it's just the one clip as well. Yeah, yeah. And someone else has made a supercut of all the different <laughs> hellos. Ah, yes, the compilation. I see that. Yeah, um, I'll I'll try and remember to put links in the description below. <laughs> oh, I absolutely just I just love it. I absolutely love it. Yeah, and I mean, yeah. um, everyone uh, mistakes him for Ducky, including um, I don't know the guy's name, but he's from My Name Is oh, Earl. Yes, 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 and um, he's been lots of different things. He's in the uh, he's Edward Norton's friend in American History X as well, like his Nazi friend. Oh, is he? It's been yeah, it's been, been so long since I've seen that movie. Yeah, he's been in loads of stuff. He's, he's a, he pops. He's a real character actor. He just pops up in lots of different things. Yeah, yeah, he um, does pop up. But yeah, that, and that's oh, it's like <laughs> another strange little cameo. It is. It, it's just I, I love the bit with the hot dog where he's like, oh, he's I, looking at the hot dog. <laughs> <laughs> like, well, I, I haven't eaten since since breakfast. <laughs> <laughs> Wasting away clearly. <laughs> but yeah, the, it's weird how I mean. Again, it's kind of silly that everyone recognises him as Dougie, even though, yeah, you know, he, he looks like Dougie, but he's thinner. It's established he's a lot thinner. He's got a completely different haircut. Yeah. <laughs> and no one seems to be picking up, even his wife doesn't seem to be picking up on the, 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 the fact that he's clearly brain damaged. <laughs> well, yeah, well, I think a big m- bag of money helps sway you in, yeah. in those kinds of situations. But um, I did think it was, a, I mean, it's it's kind of not very subtle at all, but I did think it was a nice touch that uh, Coop doesn't bring his shoes through. He has to wear Dougie's shoes, so it's like he literally steps into Dougie's shoes. Yes. Um, it's just perfect, the, 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 the kind of the, the imagery there. Mm. And um, yeah, it seems to step into them so well that literally everybody is is quite convinced he's Dougie. <laughs> <laughs> no, Dougie obviously clearly not. must have been of what we've seen of him. You know, mm. uh, he seemed a bit more talkative. But um, yeah, well, it seems like everyone liked him as well. Yeah, I think he's just one of those guys. You know, he's like a nice guy, even though he's cheating on his wife. <laughs> <For prostitute. laughs> even the prostitutes <laughs> seem to have a soft spot for him. Yeah. Like, oh, uh, well, she was clearly kind of frustrated, like, oh, I've got to put your shoes on, really? But then she just does it anyway. Yeah. Because <laughs> she can clearly see something is horribly wrong. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> but he does still have the uh, the key to the Great Northern Hotel as well. He does, yeah. Which is a really nice little, uh, that was a nice little nod. But um... And um, if his memories come back um, just a little bit, not to the point where he actually remembers Twin Peaks or anything, and that might be a kind of a good way f- to, story-wise, get him up the country. Because at the yes. moment, I guess he's, what, near, near Mexico? 
I think he's. I think so. Yeah. Um, I don't know if it is. Oh, it's it's, it's Las Vegas it must or? be Las Vegas. So yeah. yeah. It's oh yeah, because all the casinos. Fuck, it's all that. Yeah, it must be. Um, yeah, so definitely south, but n- not all the way south. Hmm. But obviously, no one else knows that he's he's back. Well, no one knew. No one, well, no one knew that he was trapped. Did they? No. The only person that knew was Laura Palmer, and she's kind of dead. <laughs> <laughs> Unless someone. Ra- oh. Oh. I wonder if it's the diary that they're looking for. Or the page is missing. They're missing pages from the diary because there's the. Hmm, I mean, it won't work now because he's already out. Because uh, Laura's Laura sees an apparition of um, Annie, who says the the good le- the good Dale was trapped in the lodge. Yeah. Write, um, write this down in your diary. Hmm. So I don't know if maybe it's something to do with that. I mean. Maybe. I mean, they did. Mm. They did say. I mean, stylistically and plot-wise, it would be a good idea for people who hadn't seen Firewalk with me before the season to watch it. So, um, I definitely mm. think there are going to be elements in there that are kind of. I mean, they've already brought things like Blue Rose and stuff to the forefront. So yes. Um, oh, okay. uh, one thing that's convinced me this week, um, reading the subreddit, is that I absolutely have to get a hold of that book. You know, the uh, what it, is it? The like the history of Twin Peaks. Oh, the the yes, yeah. something like it. that. It's in my room. I can see it. I, <laughs> I have to get that. It here. sounds amazing. So really, the the um the the presentation, like the book itself, is is it's a really lovely book. Mm. I haven't Someone got described it as like a like a dossier, basically. It's like a kind of like um a, a collation of information, like newspaper cuttings and eyewitness reports and things like that, kind of all to piece together. That's what I've heard. Yeah, um, I, I mean, it's the, the book itself is absolutely gorgeous, but um, it's a really, really nice looking book. But I haven't actually had a chance to read it yet. Oh, it's on my list. I, mm. I really want to to get my hands on it and read it because so, it's a lot of kind of background stuff is kind of like put in there. Which, and I I think I read a thread on the subreddit that was basically dealing with kind of like inconsistencies brought up by that book, and like literally there there are like maybe two out of a huge okay. book so it all kind of fits together really nicely mm. so I definitely think there might be elements in that book as well that may come to the forefront in season 3 mm, nice mm, it might be worth diving through it oh that's it I, I think um, uh, Agent Preston I think she's mentioned I think she's in the book actually not mentioned I think she's actually in it oh so, okay and um, I think there's another character as well that's mentioned it's just a shame that the person playing is not very good but <coughs> I digress um <laughs> But yeah, I'm pretty sure someone told me that she's um, she's in the book. Okay. So I should probably read yeah. that soon, sooner rather than later. Hmm. Yeah. Okay. Well, yeah. I mean, um, Dougie, uh, aka Coop, gets a lift home. Uh, <laughs> the <laughs> after the casino, uh, staff have a kind of meeting with him. And, and try to intimidate him, and it goes horribly wrong. Exactly. However, <laughs> when the, the the casino manager tries to get in his face, so Coop just keeps getting leaning closer as well. Yeah. He's like, "Oh, we're doing a thing." <laughs> <laughs> um, and, oh, I love it, how, it as well, he stands outside his uh, house and he just stands there with him. Yeah. So I'll wait with you. It's fine. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Red door. Yeah. I, it was, I can't remember the name of the street. Is that Red Door? I, got, I can't see. Oh, it's the dark. street is interesting. It's Lancelot Court off Merlin Drive or something like that. So there's lots yeah. of um, very blatant uh, King Arthur imagery there. Yeah, and I believe that might tie into something. I, I read a thread about it. I mean, I most, I read likely. every thread on that subreddit basically. Oh, it's just uh, David Lynch just doing it because he's like. That's already a good idea, and he just puts it in because he fancies it. I did notice though that they initially, um, when he's in the car with Jade, they drive past, um, was it Sycamore Avenue? Yeah. And he, you think, oh, this is it. This is when he's gonna because he, he looks at it and he recognizes it. And you think, this is it. Oh fuck! And it's like it's not it. <laughs> Obviously, then something else happens with the coffee, which we'll get to in a bit. But yeah, he. Um, well, no, we may as well get to that. I mean, um, uh, he meets with his uh, <laughs> wife Janie, who is upset Jamie. but obviously very happy that. Uh, a huge bag of money has <laughs> arrived um, and still near catatonic um, Cooper kind of settles into life as Dougie um, he goes for <laughs> a massive piss <laughs> which he's freaking out with and, and he's like, ah, ah, ah. Oh. yeah it's well if you think about it 20 I mean 
Austin Powers did the joke, but I mean, 25 sure. years is a long time to not go to the toilet or to not um, eat or drink coffee. That's very true. I had coffee um, for a while. The coffee is very interesting, isn't it? Because um, if you, I'm sure you noticed, um, after he takes the first mouthful of coffee and spits it out, hmm. he says his very first word that isn't a repetition of something someone's already said to him. Yeah. Does he say hi? He says hi. Yeah. Yeah. Because I, I thought this is it. Because the way he reacts to the coffee, especially. Yeah, you can kind looks, of. It's beautiful. Oh, I mean, I, I, I don't want to sound like horrible. I'm trying to be respectful, but to people who have kind of, you know, conditions like dementia and, and stuff like that, you mm. know, you you see these people, and um, when they like hear a piece of music they haven't heard since they were like twenty or something, it suddenly like brings them to life. Yeah. And it felt very much like that. It was kind of... I've seen threads on the subreddit of people who've said, um, I was watching this with my dad who's got Alzheimer's and it actually led to us talking for hours and we had a really positive thing sort of wow. based on the... Yeah, exactly. Because apparently it's so close to that in, in terms of kind of people's experiences. Mm. So, which is r really interesting. Yeah, maybe that's how he's trying to trying to play it as well, but... I think so. But yeah, like when, when he sees the coffee, I'm sure I wasn't alone. There was probably hundreds of people watching going, yes, this is it. Come Dougie's on, Coop. coffee mug or something like that. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> come on, Coop, it's coffee. You love coffee. Maybe it's going to be cherry pie that sets him off. I don't know, but he says, yeah, he he spits it out and I was half expecting him to go, it's hot. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Like, but hi will do because it's your first word that's not. Yeah, you know, I'll, like I'll, said, I'll settle for a word that isn't a, a parroted off of yeah, someone I can, else. I can do that. So maybe just, Maybe slowly he's he's coming back. Yeah, I don't awesome. I don't think we're going to tune into episode five and and have Coop fully back with all his kind of uh, oh god his functions. But yeah, no, this might be leading towards a waking up or a stirring of him, which is exciting. Yeah, that'd be that'd as be much as I love because... Mr. Jetpots. Mr. Jetpots. <laughs> <laughs> That's why he just hits himself and just Dougie Jones. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, call because... for help. <laughs> Call for help. Um, I, I do. Yeah, I love Mr. Jackpots, but um, I really want. I don't. I want Del Cooper back. <laughs> yeah, no. And it's, I really want Del it's back. Kind of. I think my wife's in the same kind of boat. It's it seeing him kind of teetering on the edge of being that again is just kind of you, you're sitting there the whole time going, I want it to happen. Oh, but I, 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 the things like um, she says, put your tie on or whatever, and he kind of he he puts it on his head. I mean, I was just but pissing myself. She laughing. does say. Put your tie on. He's putting, yeah, exactly. he's putting on his head. So you know he's he's a little simple at the moment, isn't he? Really? Yeah. <laughs> he's, and he needs people nice to kind of like show him how to sit in chairs. But <laughs> 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 I was just I, the whole thing, just the way it's filmed, the way he acted, it was it was superbly absurd. Mm, it's brilliant. Yeah. He's um, really he's really gone all in. Like he's he's playing he's played three parts already. Actually, well, really kind of four because. Um, he's still a lot. He's basically he's still Dale Cooper when he's in the lodge. He's just very stoic because obviously he's been in there for twenty five fucking years. Mm. Um, so he's played the regular Coop so far, but not obviously the happy jolly Cooper. Yeah, uh, Dougie Jones, Mister C, and now he's playing brain dead Coop. <laughs> yeah, or, you know Mister Jackpots. So he's played like four four roles, like four different performances. Even, I know, so, and they so. are very distinct as well. Yeah, and he's really gone all in. <laughs> yeah, which I mean, I was reading a thing. Um, Apparently, the reason why Agent Desmond was kind of created for Fire Walk With Me is because it was meant to be Coop, but he didn't yeah. want to be typecast, so he only came back to do a certain amount of scenes or something like that. So yeah, I has... found it really interesting that he kind of, he was afraid of being typecast as Coop, and now 25 years later, he's relishing the chance to kind of go all in, as you said. Exactly. I mean, because I, I'm, pr I'm pretty sure I, um, I've read somewhere that he does regret um, not not doing it, he regret. I think he's pretty sure one of his biggest regrets is that he didn't come back for um for Firewalk Me, like for that, the original role, like yeah. the with Cooper being a lot more. Um, he does say he regrets that, but I still I still think that the film works well enough with Cooper. So, and we get to see that other agents have gone missing as well. Yeah, and I mean, I I I, I'd still quite fresh for me. I I really enjoyed Agent Desmond. I could see that he mm. was also a kind of he was very Cooper ish. In terms of being yeah. like this kind of, uh, you know, shit hot FBI kind of like person who thinks on a different level, kind yeah. of yeah. But so, but he still he still felt um, different enough, didn't he? Yeah, no, he I would say he didn't. Copy. He definitely felt different enough. And I, mm. I like you say, I do like the kind of uh, 
the kind of uh, cycle, as it were, of kind of like, you know, other people investigating and going missing or, you know, it kind of like Twin Peaks, a lot of it is about things happening again. Mm. Um, so I, I think it kind of plays into that theme. So, mm. I mean, and again, again uh, um, actually speaking about um, Chester Desmond and agents going missing, we've had more um, mentions of uh, Philip Jeffries as well. We have, yes. But we Apparently, don't know if he's been communic- if he's actually been communicating communication with um, the actual agent Jeffries, or if agent Jeffries has a doppelganger as well. We don't really know. Yeah, or I mean, um, if it's something that, uh, yeah, it's strange, isn't it? Because the the communication between Mister C and Jeffries in I think it was episode two, mm. sort of implied that uh, it was not they weren't working together that Jeffries was kind of scuppering Mr. C or, or in some way. Well, um, I, th- I think I remember correctly cause it was a couple of weeks ago now, but I think when, um, Mr. C is talking to him and he thinks he's, he's trying to speak to Philip Jeffries initially, but then another voice comes through and he says, who is this? Oh, right. Okay. Yeah. Um, so I don't know if again, I, I again, there's like, there's so much they, that we don't know yet, which is great. Yeah. I think I probably need to actually, uh, if not watch the whole thing, go back and at least listen to that bit, because I think you're right. Philip Jeffries will be important in, in things coming up. Oh, definitely. I th- I'm, I'm certain as well that I read some of that. A couple of the actors have said, um, that David Bowie was supposed to come back obviously before he passed away. Yeah. Or he, well, he was probably ill at the time. Um, but the public didn't know, but, um, but yeah, I've I've heard that he was supposed to come back, so that does lead me to believe that he his character is important. I mean, whether we will we might see him in just stock footage, you know, like yeah. uh, Major Briggs, or he might just be mentioned and we never actually see him. Yeah, it might be, and a, 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 like you said, anything can happen. They can they can change characters uh, through kind of different means by making things happen to them, or or processes involved with the Black Lodge and stuff. Mm. Um. But yeah, it would have been perfect to see him back again as well. It's a shame. Um, it, is, it is a massive shame. Yeah, it's so sad actually because you know you think about uh, uh, the lady I can't remember her name, but the log lady. Oh, Catherine Coulson. Yeah, Catherine Coulson, and um, uh, of a, course Albert as well. Yeah, uh, Miguel Ferrer. Yeah, yeah. That I mean, just he looked, he looked ill. Yeah, he does, and it, it's sad. You know, it's, it's it is really kind of sad. sad, but I am glad that it, you know, I, without sounding selfish, I mean, I, I'm sure they got something out of it as well. I'm glad that they were oh. able to return. Oh, I'm, I'm sure they, because I know that that because Catherine absolutely she adored Twin, she she adored Twin Peaks. She was she always loved um, David Lynch when I you know when, um, she was at the UK festival a few years ago. Mm-hmm. She only had nice things to say about him, and she was just the sweetest old lady. She was really nice, um, and she. She yeah. kept, she sat in um in the screenings and was watching episodes with us all as well, so that was really <laughs> really surreal. <clears throat> but yeah, I I I I think they you know they wouldn't come back to to do it if they you know because they were both very ill at the time. Yeah, you can see. I mean, Catherine Coulson was a lot worse, obviously, because she died not long after they they shot the um shot her scenes. I think. Yeah. Miguel Ferrer was obviously uh was afterwards, but you could you could see that he didn't look he doesn't look well in the show and it's it's really sad to see but you can still see it's him um and to be fair he's it's i don't think it's really affected his performance in any way um, no apart from that that one strange kind of character element we talked about earlier um yeah. i've actually been really happy with his return <coughs> and with cole as well i mean mm. um uh we haven't talked about the scene with denise but um i mean the kind of the tagline everyone's kind of latched onto is the thing where he says i told them to fix their hearts or die um <laughs> which is a really just powerful awesome line so i think their characterization apart from that one kind of thing we touched on has been mm. fairly good and it's been yeah. great to see them again yeah it's, it's again yeah it's it's been like that with a lot of the characters like just seeing them again it's just like that's cool good we get to see him again this is great yeah. it um, is it is literally that i mean um i'm glad that uh they've taken the opportunity to uh, elevate everything and build more mystery and more, more layers. But I mean, if worst case scenario, this had only turned into a kind of, uh, a very kind of slightly differing retread with the old characters coming back and just being able to see them go, Oh, it's them. Um, yeah. It's, it's done it in the right way. It's it got has. that sprinkled throughout the, um, 
th- throughout the the episodes there's yeah, just enough it's, like oh it's, it's not again. gratuitous it's not that's the the thing i wanted to try and say it's just it's yeah a lesser show would have just kind of banked in on that cashed in on that and um yeah i feel yeah, like this yeah. doesn't this is the people are there when they need to be yeah and, it's not um yeah it's, it's not, spaced it's out. not like his big head. Oh, there's Nadine, and oh, and here comes James, and oh, Billy Briggs has just walked in, and oh, they're at the double R diners, and there's none of that. Oh, you've just reminded um, me, Ed and Nadine. <laughs> I can't wait. <laughs> <laughs> oh, there's a there's a theory that um, when we finally see those two, she has her own um, drapes uh, shop. The the <laughs> the noiseless drapes, the silent drapes. That would be a nice touch. Massive room. I'm th- I'm sure someone said they were on set and they saw a. Uh, a shop that had the the advertisements on it, but it was a rumor. I'm pretty sure it was a rumor, but I would love, I would be okay with that. <laughs> yeah, that's that's cool. But uh, there was there was one other character that did come back that we didn't actually really touch on, and that was uh, Bobby Briggs. Yes. Or, sh- or sorry, it should be Deputy Briggs, because <laughs> he's a fucking police officer now. <laughs> I know. I was I'm sat like, here thinking this is the guy who shot another guy in Fire Walk with me. <laughs> yeah. And like dealt drugs like small yeah, time, a- obviously, but you know to kids at high school yeah and he was a real real like kind of nasty piece of work um but then again he does have really good uh really a really good character arc in the second season when he finally yeah um he finally starts talking to his dad and his dad tells him about that dream he had i love that bit that 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 honestly that almost brought me to tears it was really kind of i felt so kind of i felt that kind of fatherly pride and that kind of connection between them so much and that the way he said it the way he delivered it i loved everything that major briggs ever said yeah. on, <laughs> on the show <laughs> and he just gets up and then fucks off and bobby's like oh fuck dad <laughs> yeah. because there are like there's there's the small elements where you do see that bobby's he's he's in he's in way over his head and he's into some bad shit but he's deep down it's, it's like mm, you know there's something there like he when he steps up um uh, this is obviously going back to the original series when he steps up at uh, Laura's funeral and he just basically calls everyone a hypocrite. He goes, "You're yeah. all hypocrites. We all knew she was. We all knew there was something wrong. We didn't fucking do anything." Yeah, he's like the only one that the, the, the boss is there, and then he tries to attack James because he's he's you know he's a dick like that. <laughs> um, and then he you know he opens up to Doctor Jacoby at one point, and then at the end, and there's the the bit with um with his with his father father major briggs and he even helps shelly look after brain dead leo yeah i mean, I mean you know I mean, jesus do, christ <laughs> do, you, do you think they're still together no do you think he's the father <laughs> of her daughter that she was talking about maybe I, I i don't think they're together though because shelly was making eyes at someone else that's true that's true yeah who, who so i don't fucking know who that is but um even though some people have been incredibly going oh she was making eyes at james no, she wasn't no, no there wasn't. was someone else there apparently. <laughs> someone else with more hair as well, a lot more hair. <laughs> it's like in the next shot, he's like there on his own. I it's think not James. <laughs> I, I need to go back and look because I think someone said that it was an actor called Balthazar Getty. Oh, that and was I've Balthazar heard of Getty. him. I can't remember yes. where I've seen him, but I've heard he's, his name before. I want um, to say he was in the stand. He he's in um, uh, Lost Highway. Yeah, that's it, Lost Highway. He's, he's lost. He's the person that um, Bill Pullman turns into. That's it. Or was it vice versa? No, no, yeah, Bull Pullman turns into him. Yeah, 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 yeah. He's, he's, he is in that, so... Um, oh, f- yeah, fuck, no, he of looks kind of like another character <laughs> in The Stand, but it wasn't him in The Stand. He was in Judge Dredd, apparently. Yeah, I think he's um he's one of the... the I think he might be one of the um like trainees, but we don't talk about that movie. <laughs> we don't talk about that movie, for it is a dark time. Um, so. no. No. I've, never, I've never actually seen that movie I've just seen someone's review of it And the, the clips of them going no. No. <laughs> yeah, it's, You're betraying you It's not good <laughs> it's, it's, just, it's not good <laughs> It's really not good I know it's just um, worth bringing it up on, on every podcast we do So that I can hear your impressions of Sylvester Sloan Which are yeah, legendary <laughs> You broke the law We called my brother You know that. Oh Jesus yeah, I'm gonna take off the helmet in like the first five minutes. No, no it's terrible. It's a terrible idea. Works. <laughs> so let's just stop it. Stop. No. It's like, oh, hey, you didn't get the character, did you? No. Okay. Um. <laughs> it was the nineties. Yeah, go and fuck off and take more steroids. Um. <laughs> he doesn't take steroids. Oh no. Um. <laughs> all all his muscles and the expendables are totally natural. That's why he can't move his arms. Um. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, back on course. Um, Every time you ever mention Sylvester else. Sloan, I think of that uh, meme <laughs> of where they've removed the gun, so he's just doing thumbs up. <laughs> you know the one? 
I love that. Yeah. It's like, oh, Rambo's just happy to see you. He's supportive of your decisions. <laughs> Which mm-hmm. gets us nicely back onto Twin Peaks. Cause, yes, it you know, does. Thumbs up. Thumbs up. Um, but yeah, it was it was great to see Bobby come back. And one of my favorite moments of the series so far, because the movie, uh, the uh, season so far has really kind of not used music. Um, it really it's been really kind of sparse. I mean, saying that, I mean, there's been a musical number at the end of three out of four episodes. And I'm yeah. guessing for the rest of the episodes, they're going to be like that. Mm. So there's been a lot of music, Strange. but the music has been very kind of concentrated in one place. And hmm. um, I incidentally, I pre-ordered that album. Have oh, you seen? Gosh, yeah, they're, yeah, they're going to do an album. It's called like Songs from from the uh, the is it the Bang Bang Bar? The bang Bang Bar. Like, they call it the Roadhouse as well, I think. But yeah, um, so it's yeah, it's yeah. called Songs from there. And um, they even the track list is secret. You can't see what's on it apart from oh. the chromatics. So, yeah, that's cool. That's really cool. I like that. I, I I think it's such a breath of fresh air that they treat this whole thing so secretly. We know absolutely dick yes and I, I, I love that i know, you know and i'm jonesing for episode five so bad at the moment <laughs> yeah like i've i've stayed away from the um trailers for game of thrones because i already know that they're going to show too much because they're just doing trailers like i saw one image that looked like it was like a massive pitch battle i don't want to fucking see that until i see it yeah as someone who has that seen shit. that trailer and i won't spoil it for you yeah. um i think you've got a point i mean not everything is given away but there's definitely no. things in there i didn't want to know no, and it's like, so. and as well as still, it's like it's season seven by this point. You don't fucking need to show us that. If exactly. We're gonna, if if we if we want to watch it, we're going to watch it. It's exactly. season seven. I, you're not I gonna agree. Get, I couldn't you're agree. You're not going to get Johnny Public to go. Oh, season seven of the show. I'll, 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 <laughs> now's the time to. Uh, now's start. the time to <laughs> jump. Jo- I'll jump on now. I'll try and catch up before like July, um, or whenever it's out. The end of this month. I can't remember, but yeah, I, I I do. I really appreciate how everything with with Twin Peaks like. Even the track listings, like you just said, are, are secret. I, I love that. Like, yeah, what? exactly. Not it's like nice. About that. Yeah. And I know that David Lynch has already been quoted as saying he hates modern trailers. So <laughs> <laughs> he feels like, I've already seen the movie. But um, so so I just do it whenever I, I try to do a David Lynch impression whenever I can. Just an excuse to do it. But even now, I have to do the hand as well. <laughs> he does that thing with his hand when he talks. Yeah. And that holds up and like shakes it. And like even now, I just did that and I had to... I to hold my hand up and do it. That's not the same. You've got to do the hand. So you get the voice. It's not the same a voice. You're just doing a voice. Um, you're not becoming him. But uh, yeah, I, I love the how, how secret it is. But um, yeah, I, yeah, you've said about the, the music. Yeah, yeah, the music swell kind of comes up as we get like the biggest moment of melodrama so far. Yeah, which is Bobby Briggs crying. <laughs> you're like, oh, Bobby. I love it's it. Been 25 I, years. <laughs> I love it. It's so kind of, it's cheesy and kind of heartfelt and emotional but also kind of it's almost like a parody as well at the same time it's yeah. uh it's perfect it's very tongue-in-cheek yeah i'm thinking it's almost like lynch is going this is all you're getting this yeah it. it's kind of like you're getting all of it here you go <laughs> it, it's the same show basically <laughs> yeah. here's your melodrama that's all you're getting fuck off i love it because he, kind of, he breaks mid mid kind of like sob to go brings back memories you know <laughs> <laughs> and the whole while uh Sheriff Truman's just staring at him. Yeah, like, you done? So Are awkward. you done, Briggs? Are you? Uh, do you need tissue? That's something else as well. Um, besides the music, which is weird, like get you know, getting back to earlier with when we were talking about uh, Wally, mm. the whole scene with uh, when Wally comes back, I was like, I was thinking, this is just missing some of the music. Yeah, I feel so. I'd, I'd like maybe you know, um. I'm not familiar with the names of the themes, but you know the one that's kind of got the ba- funky bass line that goes... Yeah, just something, like, something like, like that. that in the background would have... Yeah, yeah, or, or the, the, the snare drums, just just something. But um, but yeah, I i don't know, maybe they'll... I mean, I know that they've still got Angelo Badalamenti doing it. Um, yeah. But at the moment, it just seems like he's doing a lot more um, like really creepy uh, uh, atmospheric stuff. Like ambience. Yeah, and I, I um, think which can find I think <laughs> David Lynch was credited on at least one of these episodes as sound director, so yeah, um, so I think he's getting kind of stuck shit. into that. Yeah, he's really. I I have to take my hat off to Showtime, like the fact that they they had the 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 the, the balls, the, the courage to mm. to bring a show back after twenty five years and give the original creators complete control. Yeah, I mean I wasn't 100% up on lot. that kind of controversy, but wasn't there that moment where he wasn't signed on to do it and they were going to yeah. try and go on ahead anyway? And and then the the head 
said, we're not going to do it unless David wants to do it. And everyone was like, oh, this means he's not going to do it. And then David signed on. And everyone just signed a massive, that massive sigh massive of relief. Massive relief, yeah. Um, but yeah, it's, it's, I have to give him a lot of credit. You know, obviously Showtime's not like an ABC or uh, or uh, HBO or anything like that. But still, it's, you know, it's a, it's a network that seem, you know, clearly has some money behind it because the show yeah. looks great. I feel it's, I fact- feel it's put them on the map because I mean, I'd never, yeah. I mean, obviously I'm in the UK, but I'd never heard of the Showtime channel before when I've heard of, no. you know, ABC uh, and, you know, uh, HBO, uh, AMC. Yeah, yeah. I've oh, yeah. I've heard of yeah, all of these, AMC. but I, I'd never heard of Showtime. No, and it's just, I have to give them all the credit for not only bringing something like that back after that amount of time, which is substantial, yeah. but, let, but to then turn around and say, yeah, you have full creative control. <laughs> it's just one of those beautiful <laughs> things. And I mean, I'm so glad that it's kind of, it's getting supported, that people are watching it and it's a big buzz because yeah. um, it will hopefully kind of show studios in general that, that not only is there a market for things where you kind of, you are a bit more hands off and you let people do do what they do, mm. but um, also that there's an audience for these things and, yeah. you know. You don't oh, have definitely. to beat it into some kind of like weird generic shape that is going to appeal to everybody. It can be a neat <coughs> alien covenant. <coughs> <Yeah>. Sorry, <laughs> I got really back off. Um, but no, yeah, you're absolutely right. And also, also, like, it's. I mean, I think the the actual live viewership's not very good. But from what I was from what I read, um, it. I don't think it broke the the streaming record, but it's made really good numbers in terms of yeah. uh, legitimate streaming. Yeah, and it's it's been a big de- uh, apparently it's a big deal for Showtime in terms of what they usually get for their their usual shows. Mm. I was I was reading, basically, there's a kind of thing yeah. where it's not as high as other shows, um, but, but it's still very high in terms of what Showtime. Yeah, which is know, which is gets, great. So. And it's good for them as well. It's, it's nice. It's like everyone's yeah, it's, winning. It's, yeah, it's, it's good all around. <laughs> it's and, and, and in 2017, you know, can't believe we're sat here saying that because everything yeah. else is going to shit. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, hey, everyone's Coffee. dying. Everyone's blowing up. Coffee. <laughs> that's just. I think that's what it is. I think it's him just... You know what? Maybe that's just Trump throwing his hands up and going, well, shit, Coffee. <laughs> yeah. this, this is fucking word. It's gone to shit. It's gone to Coffee. Oh, my God. It's an anagram. I'm going to sit here working this out now. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god he's an alien um <laughs> oh mind blown number eight will blow your mind um uh, speaking of aliens um we met wally brando <laughs> oh, jesus christ that actually i want to go on one little thing just before then uh-huh because we 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 were introduced to a brand new character who's kind of not a brand new character He's kind of a brand new character in name and actor only and that's the new sheriff truman yeah um, who apparently, um, oh, is it, I can't remember the actor's name, it's going to bug me now, um, Adrian Brunson, oh, he, um, he was apparently, uh, this is what I've, I've read anyway, that he was David Lynch's original, yeah. um, Robert Forster, that's it, Robert Forster, I, I've seen him in lots of different things, he was in Heroes, he was in Heroes before it went to complete shit, mm. um, <laughs> he was one of the better things in it at, some, at one point, but, um, yeah, Robert Forster was apparently, um, David Lynch's original um, choice to play Harry Truman. Yeah, I read that too. And that's interesting, and actor, isn't it? Yeah, when the actor either didn't want to come back or just couldn't, um, he needed, needed a sheriff, so they... they very, I, I don't know if in the, the original series, did they mention that Harry Truman had a brother? I don't remember. Because <laughs> he is his brother, that's the thing. He's Frank Truman, he's not Harry Truman. Yeah. Um. So, I, I don't think he ever did, but yeah, he did. He's basically playing the same character. He's just a yeah. bit more, um, a bit uh, more stone faced at times. But yeah, Robert he's a bit, he's a bit more stoic, that. but he's still very, yes, you know, kind and um... try. He, he tries to be, like when he's talking to 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 Wally, and he's like, "This is great," and he's, he's like kind of encouraging him, and then he walks away and kind of shakes his head like, "Fucking crazy, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> strange kid." Um, but he does have one of the, the funnier moments in the episode is when he's on the phone to Lucy. Yeah. Oh, this is holding the phone funny. up and she f- screams and falls back. <laughs> and you find out, oh, what the fuck is wrong with her? And that's when you, f- you know, it's because she's like, it's because he's on a mobile phone. It means he can be anywhere. <laughs> We've talked about this, Punky. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my aunt was telling me there's some really stupid theories about that. And this is. There are far there, okay. We've had some theories. My theory that Robert Nepp is going to play Bob is a little 
a little bit reaching, a little bit, but I think there's there's weight. There's a basis it because they foreshadow. There are people online that genuinely believe that um, Michael Sarah Wally isn't actually their kid. That their kid died in childbirth or something, or when he was young, and the reason she she can't deal with tele- of mobile phones is because she's got like post traumatic stress disorder. Like there is reaching, and then there's just throwing random shit at a well, dartboard. There's reaching, and then there's Stretch Armstrong. <laughs> yeah, there's reaching, and there's going. I think everything's a dream. How we? I, 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 I was about Wally's to heads. when you said that you've got a way out theory. Um, I was about to say the way out theory that I read, but suddenly the way out theory I read doesn't seem half as far fetched as that. <laughs> it's just fucking stupid. Like, oh, it's because oh, because she can't get over the fact that Charles dead. Like. What? <laughs> no, no. Well, why? Why mo? What? Why would it be mobile phones? Yeah, it's so bizarre. I mean, the weird. So I can read for everything else. The uh, the, the weird theory that I read <laughs> was that um, some people think that Bobby Briggs, um, although he's a copper, is still peddling drugs to kids, and he might have been behind <gasps> that overdose of that kid's. You know, I forget his name. Oh yeah. It's, it's, oh, I hope not. Oh, Bobby, no. Yeah, I mean, I'd, oh, I kind no. of, I'd, I'd, I'd like to think that he's kind of, he's grown into a kind of like a more kind of kind-hearted, kind of silly old man, you know. Yeah, um, I, I mean, maybe he he'll uh, that's that's his case, and you know, because he's you know he knows all about drugs, um, so maybe that's why they put him on the case. I don't know. I hope I hope that's not the. Fun. I really <laughs> hope, hope not it's the not the case. But I mean, suddenly it compared to that mobile phone oh, thing, it's, oh, it's Jesus Christ! Oh, their kid died in childbirth. Like, so they adopted Michael Sarah? No, he's just cuz they're like cuz he's a bit weird and like have you seen his parents? Yeah, exactly. I mean people people had mm-hmm. guessed that he was going to be their child before yeah. the first episode had even aired cuz he's Michael Sarah. Yeah. <laughs> he he's he's got not these kind of type cast but I was like yeah the, they if cuz I knew she, you know she's pregnant so he'd be old enough so Michael Sarah is kind of perfect cuz he could pull off that really bizarre strange he have he has the look for it, and he, he does. I think he could, and he can pull it off. Um, but yeah, like so we're like, oh, that's why he talks weird, and and he, he's he's a bit strange, like yeah. Or it could just be that his his parents are fucking nuts, yeah, and always have been completely nuts. Oh, and and going back to you know the um the scene where um, uh, I guess it's is it Frank Truman? He was talking to Hawk, uh, Frank, um, yes, about why they had all the uh, the case material on the uh, desk, and that. Uh, asshole cop came in and was yes. being a dick. Did you see Andy was well, so like constantly looking to Frank, like with this indignant look on his face, like, you know, Frank, what are you going to do about this? He just talks shit, and then he, yeah. he like makes a, a dig at Lucy or something, and like you should see Andy's face. It's just perfect. <laughs> it's kind of looking from him to to Frank, from Frank to him, sort of like with this kind of like his nostrils flaring, like proper like do something about this. It's <laughs> Frank, so cute. Help me. I, I I thought Frank handled it very well, and he's like, but basically very polite. He says, "Get the fuck out of here." Good it. night. <laughs> he's, like, I, he's like, I said good night. Fuck off. <laughs> yeah, it's kind of like you know, this is this is Twin Peaks stuff. You know, you don't yeah. question Twin Peaks stuff. It's like fuck off, like kid. The log lady, and <laughs> yeah, it's yeah. like shit. You don't know. You don't know anything you're talking about. You ain't one of the bookhouse boys, you dickhead. <laughs> <laughs> you ain't cool enough to be one of them. That's a that's a point. I wonder if Bobby's a member of the Bookhouse Boys now. Mm. Mm. Could be. If now he's a he's a policeman, he's a goody goody guy. <laughs> he's not going to be absolutely good though, is he? And is he still friends with Mike? <laughs> it's yeah, and he's amazing mullet. <laughs> Mike's mullet was great. His mane of hair, but uh, there's yeah, there's so and again, two epi- two episodes. Um, yeah, they were back to back, sure, but uh, even in two episodes, there's still a lot that happens. Mm. A lot of new stuff as well. Like we haven't seen anything um, about Matthew Lard's character since he's been locked up. No, yeah. I mean, there was the one brief mention of them uh, getting a match for the John Doe and it being uh, behind a uh, military wall. Yeah. But um, but we've not really had anything else about that. There's been lots of new elements. We haven't seen anything with. Um, there was that one scene in the in the uh, the the first two episodes, and that one shot in Las Vegas. And the guy comes in and has the money, and he says to his boss, "Why did you let him um, make you do these things?" Yeah, and he says, I "Just hope you never find out or something like that." And we've not seen anything about that since. Yeah, I mean, I'd, I've seen several explanations as to who they think they're talking in terms of the woman they're talking about paying. Yeah, um, some people have said um, that they think 
uh, Tracy, I believe the name was, of the, the girl who's mm. bringing coffee, that they were yes. paying her to spy and find out what the box was about. Um, which, which would make sense. It, I it sort, of, make, it sort of makes sense. Um, but the one that I pr- prefer is that he was talking about um, Daria or Daria. Dala or whatever her, her, her oh, name was. Oh, yes, yes, yes. Um, and that they were talking about killing Mr. C. So mm. I think kind of um, that also fits. So it's it's yeah. going to be interesting to find out. But yeah, like Maybe you it. said, these things are kind of like <coughs> they're seeds and they've been planted now. Mm. But we might not actually see how they develop until, I don't know, 10 episodes from now. Yeah, much, much later on. Um, also, there's so there's there's the, um, I think the final thing we should, we should touch on is uh, the three agents. Um, well, it should only really be the two agents because, again, um, Christabel adds nothing to any of the scenes that she's in. Mm. Um, she's got she, the she, stuff, apparently. Yeah, she yeah she like, le- she hit leads into one funny joke, which is um, they're in the car driving to the prison, and she's leaning out the window, mm. and uh, Colin's like, "What's wrong with her?" <laughs> and uh, Albert just says, "Oh, she gets car sick." Yeah, and and then Cole says, "Was just we're in Dakota, not Russia." <laughs> it's like yeah. car sick, <laughs> which was which is really funny. But then after that, she doesn't. What does what does she do? Like she's there with with them when they're talking to Coop. She's just sat there. Yeah. Um. They even when that with their conversation, they they tell her to fuck off. Yeah. I. I yeah. He's like, like you you're here? wearing a wire, and she's like, you told me to wear a wire. She's like, fuck off. Yeah. Go away, bitch. You know. Um. It's like, why, why is she here? I don't understand. I don't understand a point yeah, yet. Yeah, I mean, I, I, the one scene I feel that's excusable is is maybe the one where they're actually talking to Coop because um, they have so much history with Coop whilst she doesn't, yeah. so that's fair enough. But yeah, aside so why from did you that, bring her with you. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Go away. Um, I, but yeah, the the interview with with Mister C is really really well handled because yeah, I don't know if it was if it was because because he was in the room. Or if it's because Coop, like Al Coop, um, the good Coop is now out of the Black Lodge, but his voice sounded kind of distorted. Mm. It was almost like it was I've heard slowing some, I, down. I haven't had a chance to go back since I read this, but I read uh, someone commented that they believe uh, when he says it's very, very good to see you, the first very is actually backwards. He says it, it's very. Or like r- r- irrev very good or something like that, yeah. and that would make That's a lot of sense because some people are saying that it's basically kind of uh, the doppelganger and by extension Bob trying to communicate, but they're used to speaking backwards. So yes. he he kind of starts trying to speak backwards and then kind of rectifies himself. But I need to go back and watch it to see if there's any kind of credence to that. But it's definitely interesting. Mm. Yeah, because it, I mean, I guess it's definitely the. <sighs> It was just the whole. His voice just sounded really kind of strange, and I, it was it was kind of slow, that obviously, because he's just been. He's still a bit. Um, uh, he's been knocked silly from throwing up all the garden bosier and and blood. Yeah, and and everything. But it, it's interesting it's like, that that's poisoning people as well. Just yeah, as that, that was that was really interesting. But but then it's, yeah, so I couldn't tell like because obviously he's, in, he's behind like a he's, he's in a room and he's behind like glass. But it's like his voice still sounded like kind of um, kind of distorted, and it was because he was talking very slow yeah. and deliberate. It's like he had to really he was really concentrating think. on what to say, and I mean that does lend credence, like I said, to the whole trying to speak forwards when you speak backwards. But um, yeah. yeah, and uh, there are other things as well. I mean, a- apart from the kind of slow and deliberate way he's talking, he also repeats himself. And kind of goes over things like more than once, uh, yes. which I mean, obviously uh, we know that there's something wrong, and the the characters know there's something wrong, but um, it's just so creepy. Mm. So he's he's staring at them very lifelessly. Yeah, I mean, as I, well. apparent, I, I, is is the case that uh, Karl McLaughlin is wearing kind of like uh, like dilated pupils or like black contact lenses or something because yes, his, yes he is. his his eyes are definitely kind of weird looking mm, it's, it's and it adds like a really really creepy unworldly vibe to him as well yeah but i just i really enjoyed the way he was he was trying really hard to come across like he was coop he's not coop <laughs> yeah <laughs> you can tell yeah and you can just see in in cole's face cole looks so like so sad when he realizes that that's 
that something's wrong. Mm. It's like, that's not Coop. Because, like, yeah, again, like, all we can do really to come across like him is smile, half, and try and smile and stick his, th- his thumb up in the air. <laughs> yeah. He's like, I was working undercover. Yeah. It's like, hmm, were you? <laughs> like, I need to be debriefed by you. Yeah, yeah, he says it like two or three times, yeah. doesn't he? Um, I mean, that yeah. that thumbs up is in just stark contrast to, like we were saying earlier, uh, kind of Dougie Coop's uh, thumbs up to his uh, Sunny Jim. <laughs> yes. They're kind of in stark contrast. You can see that one is kind of like, you know, it's it's his personality, his kind of like his vitality, his, his good naturedness. And then mm. seeing the kind of the dark side trying to imitate that. Yeah, it's, it's, it sounds like... I- because the theory is again that we said earlier that because the good coop is back out, you know, from the lodge, it's almost um, like disrupted his ability to um, yeah. to act like him. Yeah, I, I like definitely I think so. Different people, yeah. and I mean, if that backwards thing is true, then um, yeah, that just even more ad- builds this picture of uh, kind of uh, a doppelganger that's essentially kind of if if coop is fresh out the out of the lodge then then the doppelganger is almost kind of reset back to fresh out of the lodge mm-hmm. sort of not very used to uh to speaking or or uh forwards or you know yeah, appearing as like, coop <clears throat> yeah uh, yeah exactly interacting with someone like uh like gordon cole and then when obviously when he mentions he was he was uh talking to philip jeffries and albert suddenly looks very very guilty yeah um, very, very guilty, <laughs> and for good reason. Because you know, I, I was thinking initially, like it seemed a bit out of character for um, Albert to um, to to you know give out information like that. But he thought that Cooper was in trouble, and Cooper's his friend. Yeah. So you know, it makes sense that he would he would do that. But you know, it turns out that he's been supplying information to the wrong kind of person. Oops. Oops. <laughs> <laughs> Oops. Oopsie daisy. Um, Call for help. Yes. Call for help. Dougie Jones. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Jackpot. <Jetpots. laughs> <gonna> of <laughs> my life. I'm never going to get tired of just going, <laughs> Dougie Jones. <laughs> Two rights. <laughs> home. I love the way he says that as well at the end of the scene where he just goes, home. Home. It's so sweet. <laughs> Yeah. Hello. <laughs> Hello. Yeah. Oh, oh, Mr. Jackpots. You won't be around forever, but we're going to treasure you while we can. Yeah. Um, <laughs> I, I don't know if the rest of the season is going to be as meme heavy as the last week has been for me, but um, <laughs> hell, I don't care if it is. That's fine. <laughs> no, I don't care either. This has just been good enough. Yeah. Get all, the, get all the memes out. There you go. You had to get all the melodrama out of the way with Bobby because that's all you're getting. Now we're going to get all the memes out of the way because we can just fucking f- focus on the rest. Yeah. Like screw that, fuck your shit. <laughs> Focusing on on the weird stuff. Now. Melodrama memes done. Are gone. Memes done. Now we can get down <laughs> to business. Scary shit. <laughs> so it's gonna get really scary, I think. I think so. Um, yeah. And I mean, the, the thing is, I mean, we we can talk now. Uh, we've kind of covered the episodes basically. Um, we can talk about what we think is gonna happen. But to be honest, I mean, I'm I'm at a loss. I'm. This thing is yeah, takes I'd... so many turns. Yeah, I've got. I, I've... <laughs> I think the main I thing that we, we're going to see, hopefully, is is Coop coming a bit back more into himself, if not all the way back, at least some of the way. Yeah, I think. Uh, Which my I'm wife sure is very the... happy about. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I think the whole series is about him getting back to Twin Peaks. Um, I think so. I think the fact that he's got the key in his pocket still is is very yeah. important. Um, let me see. Let me see. And so, he's back on the I'm coffee. Tra- so I've been trying to um, to find the clip now of the interview, and I can't. It's very annoying me, but I, I have looked up on the wiki, mm-hmm. and it says here that when he meets the agents, he greets them by saying very backwards. So that is You're confirmed. Rev-. And then immediately corrects himself and says very pleased, because you, you're very pleased to see Yeah, I'm, I'm literally, once we finish recording this podcast, I'm going to go back and watch that, because what I'm gonna do? <laughs> yeah, I've, <laughs> I've, seen, like, I've ah, seen so many people say it, it must be true. Yeah, it, it's gotta be, <laughs> <laughs> and it, and again, you know, it's like we said, it makes perfect sense. It perfect does, sense. it does. It's definitely kind of, um, it's the first instance we've seen of the doppelganger 
playing Coop. Uh, mm. I think, yeah, because um, yeah. the end of the original series, we we never saw him kind of like pretend to be Coop. Um, there was a deleted scene in the uh, the you know the fire walk with me extra scenes and deleted scenes yes. from the series. I have seen oh, yeah, that. Yeah. It literally only gives <clears> you <throat> about ten seconds after the <laughs> the original series cuts off anyway. But um, you don't really see the doppelganger pretending to be Coop or posing as him, so. Yeah, exactly. He um, it was so creepy. It's just, it's like something that I knows slipped. it's in a hole, and needs to kind of slime its way out by, you know, playing on these these people who clearly care about Coop and and you know have come rushing the second yeah, they any go, they mention of him has been made. Yeah. Um, you know, they've got all, all his friends at the the sheriff department looking through files from twenty five years ago because they they want to help him. Yeah, and you can tell that they want to help him. Um, obviously, Frank Truman wouldn't have as much of a reason to to do it, but that's because he was probably originally written as being Harry Truman before the actor couldn't do it. Mm. Um, yeah, but, maybe, um, maybe. I mean, I I know that there's the element of the heritage, but I think maybe Hawk's character has kind of picked up a little bit of that. Yeah, um, I get that kind of sense because he's the one kind of leading the investigation or the reinvestigation. So, mm. when if it was Harry, you'd know that Harry would be. Be a bit more invested, like definitely. Buds. Yeah, yeah, they're like best buds, they're like bros, aren't they? So, <laughs> <laughs> oh, but um, mm, it's very interesting. I just, yeah, I... we don't know what mm. to expect, but that's <laughs> a brilliant that. thing. Yeah, <laughs> and it's very lynching. Like, I'm not sure what to expect at all. Exactly. I, I mean, I really hope that this doesn't mean that this is his kind of last hurrah. I hope that he makes more stuff after this. But um, mm. if it is his last hurrah, um. I think we're really in for a ride. Oh yeah, but it's going to get a lot stranger. <laughs> yeah, which is which is saying something. Yeah, because Lynch doesn't blow his load right away. His shit just gets stranger and stranger. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, Jesus Christ! I, mean, I know you haven't seen a Razorhead, and the whole film is is bizarre, but it just it just continues to get even stranger as the film progresses. Yeah, I mean, I'm going to space them out so I don't kind of uh, get depressed or anything. But um, yeah. I've not. There, there are big holes in my um, David Lynch kind of knowledge in terms of films I've seen. So I'm definitely going to go back and kind of fill in those gaps and rewatch the ones that I have seen. I, th- I think uh, he's not most normal, but he's. Uh, I, I think Blue Velvet is has got some strange elements to it, but still, um, it still feels very Lynchian. But um, it's not supernatural, or there's nothing supernatural, strange yeah. like uh, like Twin Peaks or. Uh, a razor head lost highway anything like that but um blue velvet is just fucking brilliant and again he does it very well he has really really um intimidating and unsettling uh, villains because uh frank booth played brilliant by dennis hopper is yeah. just absolutely terrifying yeah i mean i have i i definitely got blue velvet on dvd somewhere um it's a case of i, I think i'd I either started watching it and stopped, or I, basically I, the reason I got it was because of Silent Hill Two, because they kind of mm. they mimic that scene where he's kind of in the closet seeing yes. it happen. So mm. um, it's, uh, it's it's not it's it's uh, it's still very um, uncomfortable. Yeah, as is the case with with Twin Peaks, sort of a lot in my life. It's kind of the progenitor or, or the 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 thing that influences a, a hell of a lot of stuff that I enjoy. Yeah. So <laughs> a hell of a lot, a hell of a lot, and it's, um, a, it's always the the darker end. <laughs> yeah, especially the scenes like um the start of episode three, with the uh I guess some people are calling it the mauve room or the or the pink room. Other people are mm. just saying it's the kind of you know, uh, some people hypothesize that it's kind of uh, underneath everything, and he sort of falls down to the literally the bottom of everything. Um, oh, it makes sense. Yeah. So, I, I mean, I don't know where it is, but the whole thing is so surreal and dreamlike, and I can see a hundred things in it that kind of um, have been influenced by Twin Peaks, uh, yeah. the the original run, not this run. So um, it's, it's kind of seeing something new, but it's still definitely got the same kind of DNA that has influenced all that other stuff. And yeah. I can see it in it, like Silent Hill, you know, things like that. Yeah, I mean, there's, it's it's influenced a lot. Um, it's, I mean, even in terms of just um, the type of TV show it was at its time as well, which kind of revolutionised um, the way they were very cinematic. Um, yeah, yeah. And the episodic structure, like just the structure of them as well. Mm. Um, it, I mean, a lot of modern shows do owe, do owe a lot to it. And I think I might have said this 
last time uh, in the previous episode, but it's just absolutely true that a lot of shows owe a lot to something like Twin Peaks, which showed you can have a show that's structured like this and is not set on a piece of sh- is not filmed on a piece of shit set. Yeah, that's got prob like shot on like really good locations. The sets were good. It was shot on film, wasn't it? As well, so it's yeah. It's- there's a reason aside from the the cinematography and the lighting and everything else it is it's essentially film made for tv so exactly and you know and you look at how we've come now we've had stuff like breaking bad which is just phenomenal something like game of thrones which is you know uh, some of the the most incredible visuals i've seen in a television show just in terms of scale yeah and even like the walking dead like something you know big like that i mean Sometimes the effects are a bit ropey, like the tiger. <laughs> Ooh, oh, the fucking tiger! Um, but no, uh, you know, a lot. Of, they modern TV owes a lot to it. Yeah, and I mean, a, a lot of those series that you mentioned are the ones that I watch, and I also feel that those are the ones that kind of. Uh, it all goes back to kind of event TV, and I feel like mm, Twin yes. Peaks, you know, obviously yes, famously yes. and sometimes to its detriment, suffered because people were so obsessed with who killed laura palmer that you know they meddled with with what the show was about in the end but yeah. um it became such a kind of a, a thing an event and i feel like this new series is definitely an event and it's really interesting to be able to experience that live in real time as opposed to um you know sort of like watching twin peaks i don't know however many years it was five or six years ago um it's- it's just it's so good surreal. to be part of an active, real thing that's happening in the yeah. in the Twin Peaks kind of uh, community. So it's it's surreal. I mean, it, we're four episodes in. It's well, I mean, it's only been two weeks because they've shown two episodes back to back each week. Yeah. Obviously, from uh, Monday onwards, it's going to be uh, one episode a week again. But even then, it's <laughs> it's going to be hard. <laughs> been, it is going to be hard. But we're four episodes in now, and it's it still feels so strange. That's oh my god. We've, <laughs> we still got Twin so Peaks much to go as well. We've got new Twin, yeah, we've got new Twin Peaks, and there's a lot of episodes left. Yeah, right? and these this these is, double headers, these double headers were definitely kind of, I think, to lay a bedrock. So it's not even the tip of the iceberg when it comes to what's going to happen. This is just kind of setting the scene, and that's really yeah, it's exciting. Like, it's like you think this, you think it was good already. You ain't seen nothing. <laughs> no way for the good shit. <laughs> <laughs> but um, yeah, it's it's good and. I, I, I'm looking forward to the rest of the series. I hope it, because he's got full creative control. I've I've no doubt that um, it's going to continue with the same level of quality. But there's obviously there's always going to be that worry of what if. Um, I don't know. I, I'm maybe I'm riding the hype train at the moment, but I just I feel like this can't go wrong. No, I, that's something that I I do feel the same. There's always that niggling worry of oh, but what if it does? I'm like ah, if it does, it does. Yeah, I'm finding that that's a lot easier to quiet at the moment. Um, definitely now four episodes in than before because I didn't yeah. know what to expect before and I, I, but I still don't know what to expect I just know that what I'm expecting so far is based on what has come which is good so yes yeah, I just bring, bring more on I'm going to savour this yeah much, much as <laughs> I'm I've savouring been, I've been spamming the uh, in, uh, completely unrelated I've been spamming the Telltale uh, Walking Dead uh, Facebook page this week um, yesterday mm. I finished the um season three of telltale's walking dead and oh, right. uh it was good it was great i enjoyed it this is not the podcast to talk about it i'll probably make, bring it up <laughs> in the next uh spoilers of the damned cast but um do it uh i've basically been spamming every post that they've posted over the last two weeks with a comment basically saying this was great make more just make more yeah. full stop make more <laughs> just, just, just make more <laughs> and um, I, I will play i will buy yeah i feel the very kind of same sentiment when it comes to some pieces it's just make more yeah, I just I love the world. Yeah, give me. I, I just absolutely love the world. Yeah, so. It's like the closest thing I had to a new Twin Peaks for a while was Deadly Premonition. Yes, which incidentally mm. I I really feel is worth a replay now. I I want yeah. to go back and finish it. I never really finished it, so. It does get quite out there, but then yeah. in its own way, it does kind of all make sense in the end. <laughs> <laughs> which I it's so strange. It's not until you find about it that, you know. Uh, Actually, when you, you realise what's going on and why this is like that and why he's the only one that sees these monsters, like, oh, that can't make sense. Mm. That's not even getting anything away. Although, Do you know what's great? Still... Uh, sorry, I was just going to say that that um, basically, uh, whether with her will or against her will, Naomi Watts is in that game. So <laughs> it's really cool she's <laughs> yes. now in Twin Peaks. <laughs> <laughs> of course, they, they modelled... Um, yeah. Is it Emily? I can't remember the character's name. They I think it might modelled be. Modelled her Emily, after, yeah. um, after Naomi Watts. Yeah. <laughs> Oh, 
And then the sheriff's got that brilliant moustache. Oh, what a moustache. Yeah. That handlebar moustache is amazing. And the scar on his face. But anyway, this is getting off topic. <laughs> I need to play that again. Fuck. Yeah, um, me too. Me too. Too many games. But um, yeah, uh, I, I don't think I can say anything else about um, the show, we haven't, the episode that we haven't covered already, but it's just... I still, I'm still loving it. Yep, still <laughs> loving it. And I think uh, we're going to be here same time next week talking about episode five with the same yeah. grins on our faces. And yeah, you know, fingers crossed. And unless, unless it's completely horrible, and we're like, oh god, it's gone to shit. <laughs> um, like they all wake up and it was all a dream. And it's like we're going to follow James when he went off to God knows where in season two. That's that's what's actually happening. Yeah, <laughs> with, with, with the the song he did just on repeat. <laughs> Just you <laughs> and I. Oh, God. Uh, every time, just like, skip it to the creeping moment. The only good thing about that scene, actually, is that immediately afterwards, Maddie has that fucking terrifying vision of Bob approaching her. Like, <laughs> it's almost like it was worth it. <laughs> it's like they reward us. Like, you know, that was shit, right? Here's some Bob and go, ah, I won't I'm be sorry. happy until James is on stage at the Bang Bang Bar. <laughs> okay. Just you. <laughs> we had an accent, he's forgotten the lyrics. <laughs> <laughs> call for help. Oh, call for help. Uh, James. I'm going to be saying that. James Harley. <laughs> James. <laughs> Harley Davidson. Um, oh, could you imagine if he's like that as well? Poor James. Oh, poor, I feel sorry for the actor. Like He gets a lot of shit, but it's not his fault. No. It's not his fault that they just literally had nothing for the character to do. I was like, what can the actor do? And they're like, so basically, um, we don't know what to do with you, so we're going to make your character leave Twin Peaks. Okay. And then you're gonna just get it like in a love triangle. No one cares about. Oh, exactly. It's it's like um. Oh, cheers. Thanks, guys. <laughs> bring it, bring it back so to your um your favorite subject. It's kind of like Coronation Street, where <laughs> it is. <laughs> you know, it someone someone soap. kind of has their thing which lasts I don't know like five months, and then like <laughs> they just they're in the background occasionally, or they go on holiday, uh, because there's nothing for their character to do. You know. Yeah. It's just, yeah. Exactly. It's just. But then the actor's the one that gets the flag for him. Like, it's not his fault. No, of course it's not his fault. <laughs> like, he wasn't like, hey, you know what you should do, guys? You should like, completely, basically, write my character out of the show so he's completely pointless. Yeah, that's a good idea, isn't it? <laughs> like, why even fucking do that, would he? Um, I, do you know what? When, when season three is finished, I think I'm going to go straight into a season one, two rewatch, and then a season three rewatch again. Um, yes. And I think because... I'd, I've read so many things in the past week, you know, people talking about stuff that was said behind the scenes and all that kind of thing. But um, so many people kind of credit Lynch with coming back and writing the ship at the end of season two. Yeah, so I just want to remind myself <laughs> of how kind of off course season two went before he kind of pulled it all back at the end. He kind of comes in and he's like, it's crap, crap, get rid of that, fucking get out. No, no, that's wrong. That's Why have you done Why have you done that? Why is Nadine doing that? No, she's back to normal. She's fucking no, get off. Do that, get off. Here's some creepy shit. <laughs> Windermill's scary, right? <laughs> Black Lodge. Ah! You know, yeah, he he definitely does. He's like, what the hell is all this crap with, with Billy Zane? He's fucking out of it. <laughs> Fuck off, Billy Zane. Oh, Can Billy it, Zane? Zane. Oh, whenever he had a career. And then he made the Phantom. Um, <laughs> uh, and then he was in Dead Rising Endgame, uh, which we've got to do at some point. <laughs> and then he was in Uwe Boll movies as well. Oh. Was he? Was he in Uwe Boll movie? Yeah, he's in. Um, what? Well, I, why do I know this? <laughs> he's in. Uh, I think it's Dungeon Siege. Oh, okay. Oh, Jesus Christ! I know why. I've, I've seen too much. I've seen too much, well, I've seen too much trash. <laughs> why do I? I shouldn't. I shouldn't know what Billy Zane's been doing in the past ten years. No one should. Well, I'm sorry, Billy. <laughs> <laughs> I think I've. I mean, I've heard of Dungeon Siege because. Um, <laughs> Uh, Jim Sterling, he does a, a podcast where he and his friend uh, watch video game movie adaptations. Oh, yes, of course. And um, they kind of did two Matthew Lillard movies back to back. I think they did oh, Wing Commander no, and then that? he oh. was in Dungeon Siege or something. Yeah. So. And it's re- he's really bad in it. <laughs> Poor old Matthew. Like, he's trying, but I, it's, yeah, I don't know what he's doing. Oh, I'm just, ha- I'm Marvel, just happy he's in Twin Peaks. This is good. Like, this is a bump got- up for his, his roster. Well, they, they got they got Ron Perlman in Dungeon Siege. I mean, yeah, I, I, I it, can't remember what they said about it, but basically they said that it was they basically got the license and then did something completely different with it or something. Yeah, it cost sixty million to make. Wow, it made thirteen. <laughs> <laughs> now what's no? Oh, he's not in Dungeon Siege. Oh god, no, I need to know what he's been in now. That's a Uber he's in Ball something. Movie. It might be he might be in a Dungeons and Dragons movie or something. I can't remember. He's in um. 
Oh, oh, Billy. He was in 2005. 2005, 2015 was in a movie called Zombie Killers Elephant's Graveyard. That sounds amazing. Electric Children. Scorpion King 3. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Billy. Why are you doing this to yourself? He was in a movie called Alien Agent. <laughs> Alien Agent. <laughs> oh, oh, that was it. He was in Blood Rain. Okay, so new pitch for a podcast. It's called the Billy Zane Hour, and oh, we talk Billy. about <laughs> bad Billy Zane movies. <laughs> You're making me sad, Billy. <laughs> <laughs> he's a nice guy. I'm sure he's a perfectly nice guy. He was, he was Ansem in um, Kingdom Hearts because before they completely ruined Ansem. I'm not familiar with Kingdom, Kingdom Hearts, Hearts at all. I played the first one a little bit. First one's really good, and then the second one's good, but they just completely just they're out it's gone completely it's out of its mind that that series now it has no idea what it's doing it makes absolutely when no i sense. look at a game's title and it says uh kingdom hearts <laughs> 2.6 fmv edition um birthed by you know <laughs> sleep you know, like indoctrination or something yeah it's just like <laughs> was it that was it uh 358 and a half <laughs> yeah oh, yeah 358 and a half days like fuck off with that title <laughs> well that's how like, oh call it something else yeah, Fuck and apparently, title. like Kingdom Hearts three has been in development for I don't know forever. <laughs> yeah, it's been <laughs> while they make a dozen things, and then they port those dozen things to PS four or PS three. The, the concepts of the game began in two thousand six. Wow, it's supposed to be coming. It's supposed to come out like last year, I think. It's that's suck. that's longer than Final <laughs> Fantasy 30, uh, fifteen, isn't it? It's got to be. I, th- I think so. It might might be longer. Eleven years at least now. And that doesn't bode well. No. This 15 was great. I haven't even played it. <laughs> I, I, I might pick up a game of the year edition when it's like 20 quid. Um, yeah. It's, it's, when they fixed it. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so, hey, we're going to kill off a main um, antagonist off camera. Hope you don't mind. I just don't have time for RPGs. So I, I maybe when I'm kind of, I don't know, 40 and completely unemployed and <laughs> I've got like a, a back, like a giant cupboard. <laughs> Of JRPGs, I'll, it's like right. I'll it's finally I'm tired. I'm time for me to play this. Oh, I'm dead. I'm going to be messaging you on on Facebook in like <laughs> 20 years, saying, "Oh man, I finally got round to Final Fantasy 15." Right, I see what you mean. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I'm signing to the Brain Book. Maybe like Mr. Plinkett at that point. That's terrible. <laughs> I fuck my cat. <laughs> That's Thanks for turning jokes, me like... on to, to that. Um, uh, and, and all of the Red Letter Media stuff is great. I've been watching their... Um, have you seen their episodes called The Nerd Crew Podcast? It's brilliant. It's I so it. good. It's amazing. It's spot on. It's so good. It's, it's, I can't remember which group of YouTubers it's actually making fun of. All of them. <laughs> At once. It's so good. It's perfect. So when they gave us our packs... Like, it's brilliant. It's just, it's just fantastic. I, I loved it. I per I personally, personally loved it. I loved it. Yeah. <laughs> and then the the most recent one with the last Jedi trailer breakdown. They never actually get to the <laughs> Jedi trailer breakdown because they're talking about like all the shit that they're sponsored by. And it starts to break for Rich Evans. <laughs> yeah. Uh, right. We've got completely off topic. Um, yeah, we have. And oh, this one is longer than episodes one and two. <laughs> <laughs> Excellent. So what happened? Yeah, well, I yeah. I mean, and we we saw some, some some really awesome familiar faces that just made us happy. Yeah. So yes, excellent. Always happy. Right. Well, we will look forward to episode five, and we'll see yes. you guys back here then. Uh, until then, stay spoiled. Stay, Mister Jackpots. <laughs> Dougie Jones. <laughs> Dougie Jones. Home. <laughs> I feel like we're home. And to to leave it on a cheesy note, we are back in Twin Peaks, and it's beautiful. It's wonderful. Yeah. <laughs>